The January transfer window is now upon us, ladies and gentlemen, and we're here to round up all of the latest rumours going around the championship. Plenty to discuss in today's video. Obviously, we're just coming off the back of a full round of fixtures in the championship from yesterday. Plenty of juicy topics coming out of those games with Tom Cannon getting his first goal for Leicester, Leeds returning to winning ways against Birmingham. It was a great win for Coventry on the road, a 3-3 thriller we saw between Plymouth and Watford, and great wins for Swansea and Sheffield Wednesday too. Do drop your thoughts on those games in the comments down below, but we're here today to focus on some of the latest transfer rumours currently going around the league. Although before we jump into that, we of course have to discuss Wayne Rooney being fired by Birmingham City and this decision not really coming as much of a surprise. It's on the back of another dreadful showing against Leeds as they put three goals past Blues. Blues now in a position where they're 20th in the league table and only six points above the relegation zone. Night and day compared to the situation that Rooney walked in at Birmingham on now. I mean, Birmingham do have a track record for this sort of things. It's eerily similar to how they went about getting rid of Gary Rowett under the previous ownership and bringing in Gianfranco Zola as that big name appointment and that went in a similar way. Since Rooney's arrival at Birmingham, Birmingham have collected the fewest amount of points in the championship. They were averaging just 0.6 points per game which is relegation form and there can be no denying that this ownership has got this decision absolutely dreadfully wrong. Already we're seeing a lot of the usual suspects being linked with that Birmingham job. Blues fans would be interested to get your take on it down below. Who would you like to see coming in? But overall, these last few months at St Andrews have been an absolute mess. But that's my take on the Rooney situation. Now without any further ado, let's jump into some transfer news. We've got to start out with the Manuel Benson news because plenty of championship clubs are interested in the Burnley winger. Hull and Southampton especially have been sniffing around this deal and we have had some conflicting reports coming out over these last couple of days. Some reports suggesting that Hull have verbally agreed a loan deal for the winger, whereas other reports suggesting that this deal isn't quite that advanced yet. But what an option this would be for any championship club right now, especially a side like Hull looking to add that extra bit of quality that will get them over the line and into the top six thinking about potentially having Benson on one wing and Philogene when he's back on the other that's an absolutely formidable uh, force now so far this season the Belgian winger hasn't got much of a look in in the Premier League but last season in the championship he was absolute stardust playing on that right hand side more often than not and cutting inside onto his left foot scored 11 goals got three assists last season was one of the most enjoyable players to watch in the championship and whether it is Hull or Southampton who managed to win the race for this one or any other championship club who will like to come in for him they begin a cracking player who can make a hell of a difference to a potential promotion push and Benton's teammate Anna Zorori is another player on the Hull watch list. We have seen some links to Zorori emerge over these last few days. Now, the 23-year-old, like Benson, hasn't got much of a look in under company in the Premier League this season, which, from the outside looking in, I found really bizarre. He was one of the best players in the championship last season, came up with seven goals and five assists. I remember going away to Turf Moor as a Preston fan last season and Zorori absolutely tore us to shreds. So technically gifted, one of the best dribblers in the championship last season and yeah, whoever manages to snap him up if Burnley are willing to let him go out on loan would be getting a hell of a player for the second half of the season if that was to be a loan deal that Burnley were willing to sanction but... I do think there's definitely a lot of value to be had in some of those Burnley outcasts right now, and a lot of championship clubs will surely be sniffing around. Leeds defender Charlie Creswell is continuing to attract interest from a lot of championship clubs right now. Over the last few days, I've seen the likes of Blackburn, Middlesbrough, and Ipswich all being linked with the Leeds defender, and reports are suggesting that he is open to a move in the January window. He does find himself in a bit of a tricky situation at the moment because a lot of Leeds fans clearly rate him as one for the future, but his first team opportunities this season have been really limited. He's only made four appearances in the championship and just one of those games being starts. It has been uh, Joe Rodon and Pascal Stroik being the third option under Farka so far this season and for that reasoning Cresswell's not really got much of a look in. He did only recently sign a new contract extension with Leeds until the summer of 2027 so we'll be interested to see what they value him at right now and whether or not the player does indeed push for an exit in January. 
Joe Geldhart's another Leeds United youngster that has been linked with an exit from Ellen Road in January. Not had that many first team opportunities so far this season. Just six championship appearances with only two of those games being starts. Both Blackburn and my side, Preston North End, have been linked with the 21 year old. Can definitely see him as a sort of Blackburn type player with the targets they usually go for a youngster to improve. From a Preston perspective, I don't think a centre forward is that high on our list of positions we need to improve, especially with Emil Reese just coming back into the frame. I think we need to focus on the other end of the pitch, if anything, for North End right now. But that'll be an interesting one to keep your eye on over these next few weeks in January. I'm sure not the news that Norwich fans want to hear right now, but it does seem as if there will be quite a bit of Premier League interest in Johnny Rowe in the January window. The 20-year-old really has enjoyed a breakthrough season in the Championship this time around with 10 goals and 2 assists in the first half of the season. He's been Norwich's most consistent performer, certainly from an attacking point of view. And it's no surprise to see a line of Premier League clubs sniffing around the youngster with Brighton and Spurs, two of the most recent clubs who I have seen linked with the winger. Now, Norwich are in a decent position with Rowe in terms of his contract status. He's contracted with the club until the summer of 2025 and the club also has the option of extending that deal by a further year. Now, the Norwich Academy generally has a really good track record for producing youngsters and selling them for a really good fee. But I think losing Rowe at this point of the season really would damage their playoff hopes. Perhaps there could be a scenario where one of those Premier League clubs does come in for Rowe and he's then loaned back to Norwich for the remainder of the season, but Norwich fans probably won't want that distraction going around and then maybe if we push this one back to the summer transfer window, there'll be a little bit more clarity in his situation then. But yeah, definitely expect some interest in Rowe in January. The future of Jay Stansfield is up in the air right now. The Fulham youngsters had a really productive first half of the season on loan with Birmingham, where he's got seven goals and two assists in 23 appearances. But the Premier League club does have the option to pull him out of Birmingham in January and potentially send him elsewhere for the rest of the season. Both Ipswich and Sunderland are eyeing up the 21 year old and you can see why very tidy player on the ball good drop of the shoulder and decent in tight spaces being one of birmingham's more productive players this season and considering the sinking ship that birmingham looked like at the moment stansfield will surely thrive on the opportunity to be involved in a promotion push at either ipswich or sunderland i do expect both sunderland and ipswich to be after a new number nine in january with sunderland situation it's been quite well documented that frustrating lack of a proper number nine at times and with Ipswich and the injury to George Hurst that has left a bit of a void in their team which has been seen recently. Liverpool youngster Fabio Carvalho is set to go back out on loan in the January window and already a few championship clubs are lining up to snatch him up for the remainder of the season. We've already seen both Leicester and Southampton being linked with the dynamic playmaker. Now, uh, fans of the championship will be well aware of Carvalho, uh, played a brilliant role in Fulham's promotion from the championship in 21-22 with 10 goals and 8 assists. Since making the move to Liverpool, he has had a bit of a frustrating time of it, having not quite made his breakthrough at Anfield yet. He spent the first half of this season on loan with uh, RB Leipzig. Didn't get much of a look in there either. Now, from what I understand about his situation, Liverpool are going to be sanctioning another loan deal for him in January, but what they do want is assurances over his playing time. So that could lead into where he ends up, whichever club is going to go ahead and give him those guaranteed minutes. Undoubtedly, a really tidy player especially for the championship i'm sure all the clubs mentioned would happily take him for the season Bournemouth's David Brooks is someone we could see returning to the Championship in January as the likes of Leeds, Southampton and I've also seen Cardiff have all been linked with the 26-year-old winger on a potential loan deal for the remainder of the season. Now in the case of Brooks, he has of course missed quite a lot of football over these last few years because of illness. He's since put that behind him and maybe a loan deal back to the Championship could be the best thing for his career right now. Get those consistent minutes into his legs and he could definitely play a role in a potential promotion push for one of those sides. At Bournemouth so far this season he's more often than not been a squad player, has played 12 times in the Premier League but 10 of those appearances have come from the bench. Really classy player, knows how to pick a pass and it would be great to see Brooks back in the championship and 
fully at his best. Ahmad Diallo is a name I think we're going to be talking about a lot throughout January as he continues to be linked with a loan move back to the championship. Absolutely lit things up in the league last year for Sunderland and after a bit of a frustrating injury hit first half of the campaign for Man United, does seem like a loan move could be on the cards for Diallo in January. Now he will be away for AFCON which is worth considering that it could delay any potential loan deal going through until later in the window for him. Of late, I've already seen the likes of Ipswich and Southampton being linked as they're looking to add a bit more wide creativity to their squads. Sure, Sunderland won't be too far behind in the race to snatch him back on loan either, and there are also a host of Premier League clubs who would be willing to take him as well. Another winger who looks to be on the move in January is Jeremy Sarmiento. He did spend the first half of the season on loan at West Brom from Brighton. He's since been pulled out of West from but is set to go back out on loan for the second half of the season and it seems like Ipswich will be his next destination. Clearly a very talented player but didn't really mesh into West Brom system under Corbrand. It'll be interesting to see if Kieran McKenna can get much more of a tune out of him. It does seem more than likely that Kiefer Moore will be on the move in the January window and it seems like Cardiff will be his most likely destination. I think this will be a cracking bit of business by Cardiff to get him back to Wales given how prolific he was during his last stint with the club. Uh, so far this season not got much of a look in at Bournemouth. All seven of his Premier League appearances have come from the bench but the 31 year old certainly knows how to find the back of the net in the championship. Brilliant hold up man. Also got a really good movement which I think is a sometimes underrated characteristic with more brilliant physical presence and I think would add a hell of a lot to that Cardiff forward line. Liverpool youngster Kate Gordon is someone who could be on the move in the January window. We've seen Birmingham being most prevalently linked with him of late. The right winger clearly has a lot of potential about him. He's had a really frustrating last sort of 18 or so months with injuries. But it seems like a championship loan deal could be on the cards along with Birmingham. I've also seen the likes of Middlesbrough and Ipswich being linked. Speaking about a potential departure from Birmingham though, Italian outfit Atalanta have sent a formal bid to Birmingham for Jordan James. Fabrizio Romano reporting that the initial fee that they've sent will be around the 4 to 4.5 million euros mark, which does seem really cheap for a player with James's potential. So far this season, he's got five goals in just over 1,100 minutes for Birmingham, but surely they'd be able to get more money out of him than that but guys there you have it for today's video thank you very much for tuning in if you did get one to enjoy make sure to leave a like and do get all your thoughts on the transfer speculation in the comments down below any other transfer rumors that we didn't get around to mentioning in today's video do let me know about them down below but other than that thank you very much for tuning in and i'll see you all in the next one